one seat is sun. Okay, we'll move, we'll move. We'll stand like this for a few minutes and then kind of shift like this, okay? But right now, we'll leave it right here. This beautiful little child, this innocent little child was murdered through genocide. Does anyone know what genocide is? Genocide comes from two words, genus and side. Genus and side, two Latin roots, if I'm not mistaken. Genus means a class. You have different classes assembled here today. Classes of steps of education, right? Side means to kill. Homicide, biocide, patricide. There's all different forms of killing. If you kill your father, it's a patricide. If you kill a human being, it's a form of homicide. Genocide is a form of homicide, a form of killing people in which a particular class of people is singled out the way the USA did 40 years ago. You might single someone out like this boy was because of his tribe and cut apart with a panga. That would be a form of genocide. You might single someone out because of their age, because of any class or category, tribe, age, race, religion, any class you put people into and say these people can be killed because of the class they fall into. That's genocide. Over here, another example of genocide. Here's a mouth. Here's a very, very small coin from the USA. Here is what would have been an eye, a tongue, another eye. This is a first trimester, only 10 weeks after conception. A little child legally murdered in the United States of America, butchered butchered because of that decision made today, 40 years ago, by the highest court in the USA. I don't think you're carrying Bibles, but I want to read to you from the Bible, from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 1, and as I'm turning to Exodus chapter 1, I want to give you the number of the way. Let me tell you how many of these children, from the first trimester again all the way up to the day of birth, in the past 40 years, approximately, approximately 55 million little baby boys and little baby girls thrown away in the trash like these children here in America, this proud nation of America. This nation that sent missionaries to your country many years ago, up till today. But a nation that has gone back, a nation that has backslidden, a nation that has done like a dog. What does a dog do? The Word of God uses this example. When a dog eats something, and it doesn't sit right with the dog, the dog leans over, bleh, he throws it up, right? He vomits, right? But then the dog's walking around, and he's thinking, man, you know, that wasn't so bad. I don't know why. I, why did I vomit? Why did I spit that up? I go back. Let me check it out. Hey. <laughs> it smells pretty good. What does he do? He bolts and he laughs it back up. Before you know it, he's cleaned it up. There was every little chunk back inside of him. That's what America did. That's what the United Kingdom did. That's what Europe did after God Almighty reached down and delivered them from idolatry, from human sacrifice by sending the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of reconciliation to God. These were poor, let me tell you, white people 500, 1,000, 1,500 years ago, depending on which country you come from, white people were running around in Europe, running around, worshiping trees, killing one another with tribalism, doing unspeakable things to worship their false gods came to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. You see, the gospel of God was in Africa long before, hundreds of years before it came to white people in Europe. We read, we don't have time to turn that, but we read in the book of Acts, I believe Acts chapter 7, early in the book of Acts, the apostle Philip, the disciple Philip, met an Ethiopian eunuch, a man who was an officer in the court of Candace, 
the queen of Ethiopia, an African man who was a Jew, a convert to Judaism, who was searching the scriptures, trying to find out who is this Messiah. You see, you have a heritage as African people, a Christian heritage that stretches far back beyond. If you only reach and grasp it, far older, a heritage that is far older than the days when white people brought by God's grace, the gospel. Amen? Christianity is your birthright. Let me tell you, Christianity, the word of God, obedience to the one true God, is your birthright. The USA has sold. There are still people who, love, who fear God in the USA. But by targeting the children of God, by taking a class of people in their pride and arrogance, and saying we can kill people made in the same image that Jesus was in the womb of Mary. We can kill them for any reason we choose. People made in the image of God. They have thrown away their birthright. And for 40 years, men have warned them, women have warned them to stop. And they have stubbornly, stubbornly refused. 55 million dead. When you watch TV, when you see the movies that come from America, you see all the riches, you see all the money, you see all the beautiful cars and the good things, you remember, that's the outside. Do you understand? That's the outside. I'm showing you today, and we've shown you today, the face of the inside. Exodus chapter 1. Did you have your Bible? <clears throat> Exodus chapter 1, verse 13. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. I'm reading from the King James Version. They made them serve rigorously. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, slavery, in mortar and brick and in all manner of service in the field. In all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. It was very hard. And the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives. Israelite midwives, of which the name of one was Shipra, and the name of the other was Pua. And he said, you midwives, uh, when you do the office of a midwife, verse 16, and you see them upon the stools, in other words, you see the ladies standing with their legs back to give birth to a child, if it's a son, if it's a boy, he said, kill him, then you shall kill him, but if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the mid Verse 17. Are you with me? But the midwives feared God. The midwives what? Fear God. <clears throat> feared God. Do you fear God? Yes. Do you fear God? Yes. Amen? Amen. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men and children alive. And the king of Egypt called unto the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men and children alive? Verse 19, The midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered un, uh, before the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. Now here's an example. Of these midwives, they lied to Pharaoh. There's no other word for it. They lied to him. They told a lie. If you have to tell a lie to save an innocent person from being killed, you tell a lie. Do you understand? You tell a lie. When wicked people are trying to kill innocent people, you don't have to cooperate with them. Even if they're a king. When they're trying to kill innocent people made in the image of God, don't, if you fear God more than you fear men, you won't cooperate with them. Amen? You'll do whatever you have to do. Amen? To stop them from killing because you know, as someone who says you fear God, you know that this court of this king, this power, in this life is not the only power that you have to give an account to. It's true, isn't it? Sindio, yes. is it true? You know that a day is coming if you fear God when you will stand before him and there is no king, there is no ruler, there's no father or mother, there's no one in authority protect you from him. You see, God is the one who is able to destroy, the Bible says, both body and soul forever in hell. Amen? So if you fear him, you won't collaborate with people who have targeted his children for death. Innocent people 
innocent people. So if I can drive nothing home to you today, except this one thing, you listen to me, look at me and pay attention. So look at the people walking in here. Look at me. If you fear God, if you fear God, may God forbid that you should cooperate. The USA has an agenda for Kenya. The UK has an agenda for Kenya. They have given their power to Satan. And they have an agenda for your nation, for your people, for your continent. They have slaughtered 55 million of their children through abortion, starting 40 years ago. And they want to do the same thing to you. They want to eat up your country. But see, Pharaoh had to use a lot of effort and a lot of, a lot of work to try to, to try to get these people to kill those children, and he was trying to destroy someone who came like the baby Moses, right? Moses was delivered by God's grace out of the hand of Pharaoh. Just like King Herod, skipping to the New Testament, tried to kill the baby Jesus. You see a pattern here. Thousands of years between Moses and Jesus, but the same mind, the mind of Satan, the mind that controls every power on the earth that is not submitted to God. You see, when a government does something like this and declares war on God, on people made in the image of God, there's, there's not three options. There's only two options for power on this earth. It's either in submission to God or in rebellion. All the way from a young person like yourself, every one of you, sitting here today, you're either in submission to God, amen, submission to God, or rebellion. It's the same with nations. Nations may contain people who are in submission to God, but the nation as a whole may be in a state of rebellion. Do you see what I mean? By making decisions like this. By making decisions like this. So this mind of Satan is there and ready to swallow Kenya alive. <coughs> Out of the people sitting here today, let's say there's 600, at least a third of you, at least a third of you, even more, Satan wishes all of you were dead. But if they had their way, if they had legalized abortion, probably at least a third of you would not be sitting here today. Consider that. Consider that. I'm not accusing your parents of anything, but here's what I'm saying. 40 years, once a thing like this is legalized, all it takes is one person, one person to be killed. And that person, not only that individual is eliminated, but all their descendants. When Cain picked up a stone and murdered his brother, Abel, in the book of Genesis, what did God say to him? He said, your brother's blood. The word in Hebrew is a plural word. It actually means the line, the descendants of Abel are crying to me from the ground. Not just those drops of blood that were spilled from Abel's head, but literally the bloods, all the children that Abel would have had. The whole line of humanity that would have come out of Abel is crying to God from the ground. And it's the same with these children here. So put it in your heart not to follow the example let it be pressed into your heart. Please turn around and show the other side. We have another image, also of a 10-week aborted baby. And go ahead and step up uh, again on the platform, please. Uh, in Genesis 9, verse 6, after the great flood which destroyed the entire earth, God saved Noah, right? Amen? A single man in his household, a righteous man, but God knew that because of sin, the spirit of murder was still in people. Even though Noah was a righteous man, his family was righteous, God knew sin was still in the heart of man. And the spirit of murder, God knew, would very, very soon rise up again. The spirit of murder. Look at this man. This point is very small. Again, 10 weeks, first trimester, aborted baby, murdered baby. So God was trying to restrain the spirit of murder by giving this law to Noah. This universal law and principle, whoever sheds human blood, the blood of man, by man.